Hello and welcome to another video and things are about to get controversial. So before I start I'm going to ask for two things. Firstly that you like the video because you're excited for the controversy and second that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'm a cool guy. Right let's get into it. So since making the switch from powerlifting to bodybuilding the steroid accusations on my channel have been ridiculous. Like it's safe to say they are at an all time high. There's even threads on Reddit discussing my natural status and when I say discussing I mean just everyone on their university agreeing that I'm 100% on steroids which isn't a discussion, but that's not the issue here. Now, on the one hand, this is a good thing, right? Like, if I look so good that people assume I have to be on steroids, that's awesome. But it's also incredibly frustrating, particularly as the people making the accusations are A, basing their judgment on sound, extensive scientific research, like, he's bigger than me and he's quite lean, so he's definitely on steroids. And B, and this is the worst bit, they're not up for discussion on the topic at all. Like, they're 100% certain that I'm taking drugs, as if, like, they've literally physically seen me injecting the steroids into my body. Now, let's be clear here. If your sole criteria for accusing someone of taking steroids is that they're big and they're pretty lean, then you're a moron, and you probably brush your hair with a fork and eat toothpaste. However, if you've actually done some research and you've looked into studies on things like the fat-free mass index, and you've come to the conclusion that some of these guys, myself included, may be taking steroids, then fair enough. I mean, I'm not, but you're entitled to your opinion. So, my mission today is to show that yes, there are some guys out there who are taking steroids and claiming to be natural, but at the same time, there are a lot of guys who are being absolutely hammered for taking steroids who are in fact actually natural. So if you're excited to see the comment section about 24 hours after this video goes up and to find out if some of the guys making these accusations have actually figured out how to use a keyboard and structure a sentence made up of words comprising of more than one syllable, then give this video a like and let's get into it. <laughs> Now, I appreciate that a lot of people are probably going to think, just don't worry about it, like, there's no point making a video about it, because these guys aren't going to change their opinion. And I thought the same thing, but then I thought, you know what, it doesn't mean you should just ignore it. Like, if you think about, like, a more extreme example of this, think about, like, uh, racism or, like, homophobia in society, just because you think someone's going to have that opinion and not going to change their opinion, it doesn't mean you should just turn a blind eye to it. Like, I just feel you have the right, as a fellow human being, to educate these people and show them that maybe they shouldn't think the way they do. Now, I'm not necessarily comparing racism and homophobia to false steroid accusations, but they are all based on the same principle, whereby, you know, you once knew someone who was big and lean and they took steroids and therefore everyone who's big and lean must also be on steroids. On top of this, going back to the spate of steroid accusations leveled at me, I thought rather than try and convince these people that I'm not on steroids by saying I'm not on steroids, why not try and better educate them so they can make an informed decision based on fact rather than just what their mate Barry from the gym said. So, first of all, the vast majority of discussion around steroids and fake natties revolves around the fat-free mass index. In case you're unaware, as the name suggests, the fat-free mass index is a tool which puts you on a scale based on how much fat-free mass or muscle mass you have. It takes your height, your weight and your body fat and then it gives you a number. So to use myself as an example, I've used my numbers from the end of my cut a few weeks ago because in order for this to be accurate, you need to be pretty lean. So if you're like 25% body fat, this is a waste of time. So you can see my body weight is around 200 pounds, so I think about 91 kilograms. My body fat, I've estimated at about 9%. I think it was pretty accurate there, maybe out by about 1%. And then my height, six foot one inches. And as you can see, that gives me a fat-free mass index of about 24. And just for a bit of fun, I thought I'd work out the FFMI of a few fitness YouTubers slash celebrities. First up, we have Rob Lipsit. Now, Rob has an excellent physique, but as far as I know, there are no question marks over his natural status. And as you can see, his FFMI is around 21.7. Next up, we have Christian Guzman, a pretty similar athlete to Rob, I'd say, and again, no question marks as far as I know over his natural status. And you can see his FFMI comes out at around 22. Then, moving up the scale a little bit, we have Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, aka My Hero, who has an FFMI of just over 25. And finally, to finish on a high, we have Carly Muscle, who has an FFMI of just over 32, and I think we can safely say he's definitely natural, in the same way that, you know, incest is natural. Now, this is where the bro science starts creeping in, right? So most of the things you'll read and hear about the index will claim that anyone with an FFMI of higher than 25 is almost certainly on steroids, right? Like there's some kind of magical barrier. So 24.9, you're fine. 25.0, definitely on steroids. Like, surely anyone can see that in itself is ridiculous. And this is where a lot of the issue lies because there are a lot of people like myself who are close to or above that 25 threshold but don't take drugs. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier about prejudice. Like, just because you know there is someone with an FFMI of more than 25 who's on steroids, it doesn't mean you can just assume that everyone above 25 is also on steroids. Well, technically you can, but that makes you a narrow-minded moron. Now, let's just play devil's advocate for a second here, right? I'm going to assume that that viewpoint is correct, okay? Because there are some people above 25 who are on steroids, that means that everyone is, right? I can counter that immediately by saying that there are some people on steroids 
steroids who are below 25. Like I know a guy who takes steroids, has done for like a couple of years, and he looks horrendous. I mean, his FFMI is probably about 20, right? So does that mean that everyone below 25 is also on steroids? Of course it friggin' doesn't. The point is you can't paint everyone with the same brush. Okay, you may be wondering where this magic point of 25 on the FFMI scale comes from, right? And I was thinking the same thing. So yesterday, I started doing some research. And to be honest, what I found was pretty funny, right? Like. A lot of this stuff stems back to a study that was done in 1995 where they tested 150 athletes, or roughly 100, I think it was about 154. And about half of those were steroid users and about half of those were non-steroid users. Now, what this study found is that of all the non-steroid users, none of them had an FFMI of higher than 25, whereas lots of the steroid users were significantly higher than that. And on the surface, that looks pretty damning for anyone with an FFMI of higher than 25, right? But if you delve a little deeper, which I did, I love delving, it all starts to unravel. First, Firstly, a sample of 150 people is ridiculously small considering the magnitude of the claim. Like if you're saying that this study applies to everyone in the world, but you've looked at 150 people, that's ridiculous. I mean, alarm bell should be ringing in your head straight away there. The next issue is that although the participants were labeled as athletes, which sounds pretty legit, right? You hear athlete, you think like, you know, experienced elite level bodybuilder of like 10 years of training behind them. That's not the case. Like the criteria for getting in this study was that you're at least 16 years of age and you've been training for at least two years. Like, that's it. So to be clear here, you could have participants who are 16 years old and have been doing like press ups and pull ups for a couple of years versus experienced 30 year old bodybuilders who have been training for like 10 years. Now regardless of who's taking steroids and who's not, that's just not comparable usable data as far as I'm concerned. And I think another huge thing to bear in mind with this study also is that you're looking at steroid users versus non-steroid users, okay? And if you look at those two demographics, they're gonna differ because generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, if you're a steroid user, you're gonna imagine that's someone who's been training for a long time, you know, grafting away, get bigger and bigger and bigger every time, they've kind of reached their ge their genetic kind of limit and they thought, you know what, I'm going to jump on some steroids now, versus someone that's not on steroids is more likely to be a beginner and someone with a lower training age. And so therefore your average steroid taking gym goer is going to have a higher FFMI than your average non-steroid taking gym goer, not just because they're taking steroids, but because they've been training for a lot longer. On top of this, and this is like the elephant in the room, can I just say that saying makes no sense, right? Like the elephant in the room, you're meant to like not address it, it's a bit awkward, there's an elephant in the room, like, if there's an elephant in my room, I'm gonna be like, guys, there's a freaking elephant in the room. Why are we just sitting here? Like, let's address the enormous creature in our room. How did it even get here? How did it fit through the doorway? How are our floorboards currently supporting its enormous mass? Sorry, went off on a bit of a tangent there, but yeah, as I was saying, the elephant in the room is genetics, right? There is no way of objectively measuring genetics, and yet, if you have good genetics, that's gonna drastically increase your FFMI. So who's to say that in that study, the participants that were getting the high FFMI on steroids weren't also genetically gifted? And if that wasn't enough for you, the study even friggin' admitted that having an FFMI of 25 or over wasn't enough evidence in itself to say that someone is definitely on steroids. But human nature being the way it is, whereby everything has to be measurable, the number 25 became that magic figure whereby you cross over from the world of the naturals to the world of the steroid takers. So, in conclusion, it is true that a lot of steroid takers have a fat-free mass index of 25 or above. And that if you were to go and test everyone with an FFMI of 25 or above, the majority will probably be on steroids. But, and this is a huge but. I mean, so sick. There are a lot of people out there who have an FFMI of 25 or higher and are natural, but unfortunately because they're part of the minority, it's easier for people not to acknowledge their existence. So, although it's unlikely, it's very much possible to be huge and jacked and shredded and yet not be taking steroids. And I can't stress this last point enough. Unless you have actual evidence that someone is taking steroids, stop whining like a little rat, get in the gym and train harder. And that, my friends, is where I'm going to end the video. So I sincerely hope you've enjoyed it, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you tomorrow.